subsequent notice of this meeting has been provided by a posting on the bulletin board in Village Hall by mail to the Ridgewood News, the record, and by submission to all persons entitled to same as provided by law of the schedule, including the date and time of this meeting. Roll call. Councilman Hache. Here. Councilman Seaton. Here. Councilman Voigt. Here. Councilwoman Walsh. Here. And Mayor Newsom. Here. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Please join us in a moment of silence for our men and women serving our nation and for our first responders. Thank you. I'm going to welcome everyone to our regular public meeting of the Ridgewood Village Council, July 12, 2017. And we'll start with a few administrative items. Um, I move the bills, claims, and vouchers and statements of funds on hand as of June 30th, 2017 be submitted as accept as submitted. Second. Hache. Yes. Seaton. Yes. Voigt. Yes. Walsh. Yes. And Newton. Yes. I move that the Village Council minutes of March 9th, March 27th, and April 12th, 2017, having been reviewed by the Village Council and now available in the Village Clerk's Office, be approved as submitted. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. And with no proclamations, we are going to go right into the swearing in of Police Sergeant Salvatore Benico. Big mouth. Oh, that's really loud. Okay. All right. Now you're going to repeat after me. Okay. I. I. State your name. Salvatore D'Amico. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. To uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly, perform all the duties, perform all the duties of office of police sergeant, of office of police sergeant, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs>
nobody wants to stay for the meeting. So with that, we'll move on to comments from the public. Um, not to exceed three minutes per person for a total of 40 minutes. Anybody wishing to speak, please come state your name and your address. Just one minute. Okay, name, address. Go ahead. Okay. So my name is Robert DiLorenzo, uh, 16 Griswold Place, Glen Rock, New Jersey. I I'm sorry, say it one more time, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. A longer? Go ahead, start, start again. That's <laughs> sure. okay. It's a test. The first one was just a test. Yep, my name is Robert DiLorenzo. I'm a resident of Glen Rock, uh, 16 Griswold Place, Glen Rock, New Jersey. Ms. Knudsen, I, I spoke with you about two days ago or three days ago regarding the parking issue. Okay. So I just figured I'd come tonight to address the council, hopefully make everybody aware of some of the challenges that we're facing as both employees and patrons. My wife actually works for in the town of Ridgewood for a store, and she has a parking permit pass, parks in the employee lot, but we continue, this is the third time now that we received a parking ticket erroneously. And the challenge that we're having is that, you know, the cars are registered to my name. The tickets are issued either on the windshield or by mail. There's no standard. We didn't receive the ticket. We got a failure to appear notice. Luckily, we were just leaving for vacation. That notice came the day before we left for vacation. Otherwise, we would have ended up with a suspension, uh, you know, for a failure to appear notice for a parking ticket that we never deserved. The challenge seems to be that the application that the parking official uses to verify, you know, whether you paid for parking or not, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, he issues a ticket, which requires not only myself, but my wife both to go to court to have it dismissed. And it continues to be a challenge. It's time consuming. It costs me money, it costs the town money, obviously, to run, you know, have something on the docket. Uh, more importantly, this affects my employment. So, you know, I work in the government education sector in IT. I'm an IT professional. And because I work in those sectors, as well as the public sector, they do very stringent background checks. Any suspensions on my driver's license, which I did incur a year and a half ago for a minor traffic violation in Wildwood, caused me to actually lose a job. When I, get a when I get issued a ticket like this, where if I don't get that ticket, it's not on my windshield, I didn't get it in the mail, and then I get a failure to appear notice, and if we were away and I didn't get that notice, that would have issued a suspension, which could affect my employment, both present or in the, you know, when applying for a job. So I've spoken with the mayor, you know, at length about this. I'm interested in helping try to solve the problem from an IT perspective, but also finding some way to administratively have this dismissed so that we don't continue to, you know, have to constantly go to court to have this re removed. You know, we can't get until 6.30. Could be another hour sitting there. You know, my wife's got to work. Okay, so typically we don't respond to public comment, but I just want to say that I believe we left off that you were going to send me copies of the paid park mobile pay stub or something and I don't believe I received anything so oh, you didn't uh, no because I did forge I knew you were having problems with your email yeah and I I did see an email but it looked just like a um, 
I opened it up and it was just your email again, so there was no attachment to How, it. Can I make a photocopy of that for you tonight? I mean, I have it with me. I didn't know if it was necessary to bring it, but I did. Why don't you just um, do me a favor, email it again to me and copy the village manager because she's, um, I spoke right. with her about it already. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And then, so for the, for the moment, just at least do that and then we'll move on from there. Okay. What is the process, though, going forward about, you know, discussing this parking situation as a whole? Because I, I find, you know, right now the surrounding towns, with the exception of Englewood, I believe, doesn't charge for parking. And this continues to be a challenge for not only the stores and the merchants. You know, I'm very close to a lot of the merchants in that area, and those businesses are suffering. People don't tend to want to shop downtown because the parking is a very difficult situation. The employees have to have a sticker. They have to go to a special lot. That special lot is further away than the actual business district. During the winter time, it's dark. My wife particularly isn't a fan of having to walk in the dark back to her car for safety reasons. So I can't, you know, argue that with her. But I, I just think we got to come up with a better solution. I know we've tried for many years now with the parking structure and. It's just not working. You know, the, the, the Park Mobile app is, is an interesting application, but the technology doesn't work. And getting it resolved, I mean, this is a half hour later and the guy's writing the ticket. It's a $30 ticket. You know, my wife was like, I don't even know why you're going to council meeting tonight to argue this thing. It's not going to change. And I don't believe that if you don't voice your opinion about something and actually create a dialogue that nothing can change. Okay, so we'll take a look at it, and I think it would be helpful for us to have the documents and the information so we could actually better understand what took place, and I think that would be a first step, and then we can proceed from there. I, I think that's, like I said, the best, the best approach is to at least have in front of us that there was sure. a, a Park Mobile payment, and then there was a ticket, as you described, uh, shortly thereafter, and so those two documents would show us that there's something because I don't think um, that we've had any significant complaints about Park Mobile and that's the first question I had so I'm not certain right. about that and I think that would be helpful for us to understand. And, and just keep in mind right a lot of people won't take the time to make this argument right $30 ticket they're just going to pay it okay. right they're going to get a suspension they're going to go through the aggravation because they don't have the time they don't have the desire yeah. or passion for change. Okay. Right. I'm not saying that there's not a problem you know I believe there's a significant problem but I don't know what, how many people are making a statement about it. Right. I know that you guys have heard plenty of complaints about the parking in Ridgewood, so we know there's a parking issue. I'm just saying that you know if we're going to continue to issue erroneous tickets, there's got to be a way to at least electronically resolve these things without having to come to court. Okay, take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Sheila Brogan. 302 Kensington Drive, Ridgewood. Um, I'm here as the co-chair for Age Friendly Ridgewood. Uh, Beth Abbott couldn't be here tonight, so I'm speaking on behalf of both of us. But we would want we want to thank you for your support and interest, um, and report a little bit about what friend, Age Friendly Ridgewood's been up to uh, recently. On June 19th, Age Friendly Ridgewood hosted a walkability study of the uh, Central Business District and Franklin Avenue, uh, performed by the New Jersey Department of Transportation and their consultants. Thanks, Mike, for um, attending and being an active participant in that. Um, we hope to receive the report uh, from them by the early part of fall, and we'll be glad to share. Age Friendly Ridgewood um, will also be, um, this summer, paying for grade and pool passes for Ridgewood residents 62 years of age and older who are eligible for food stamps, Medicaid, or PAD. Flyers have been prepared and we will make every effort to let seniors know of this opportunity. This initiative grew out of the senior picnic held at Graydon in late June and the positive responses that we heard back from the seniors and thank you to Susan and Jeff for spending some time and um, you know, taking the time to join us. I know it's not always easy to get away in the daytime. In an effort to open up um, opportunities and experiences in Ridgewood, um, Age Friendly Ridgewood is working with Janet Fricke 
and will fund extending the senior bus service for seniors who would like to attend the Tuesday evening concert series at the Cashaw Band Shell. Seniors interested in riding the bus uh, to the shell will be provided with a chair and bug spray so they can enjoy the evening in comfort. Ridgewood New Players Association has just written to uh, age-friendly Ridgewood and is offering seniors a discount of $5 on the ticket price for the summer New Players um, shows at uh, Ridgewood High School. So that's an exciting new opportunity that's opened up. Age-Friendly Ridgewood will support the cost of an additional day for the senior bus service um, starting after Labor Day. Uh, with Janet Fricke's help, we're finalizing the plans and we'll be announcing all the details soon. Finally, we are aware that some of our residents who receive food stamps and are low income have difficulty buying paper goods, personal grooming products, and cleaning supplies. Food stamps can't be used to purchase such items as paper towels and toilet paper, soap, shampoo, or laundry detergent. Last month, we, re we placed a bin at the library to collect these items from people who were interested to donate them. Our bin was full. We've collected that and we're donating those items to Social Service Association, Ridge Ridgecrest Senior Housing, Share House, and our Neighborhood Assistance Program for distribution to those in need. In the spring, we launched our website, oh, and that bin has been moved to Graydon Pool for this month, and then it will move to the stable. We're working with the high school to move it to the high school in <coughs> September, in Christchurch in October. So there are plenty of opportunities if you have extras and would like to share to drop off those <coughs> donations at the bin. In the spring, we launch, launched our website. It lists helping organizations and programs related to housing, transportation, health services, and community services. It's a wonderful resource for older adults and their families. And, we can, and can be found on the web at agefriendlyridgewood.org. Ridgewood is a wonderful community and a great place to grow up and to grow old. Thank you for your support and interest in this initiative. And, and thank you, Sheila and Beth, for all the work you've done. And it is true that Ridgewood is age-friendly. And so we really appreciate that. And we especially appreciate the support for the senior grade and days. Uh, it's really very generous, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Oh, good evening, uh, Anne Marie Agnello, 31 Clinton Avenue. Hello to Mayor and Council members and staff. Um, I am um, obviously I live on Clinton Avenue, as I stated. I'm not opposed to changing the hours of the, um, you know, the opening of the street. Um, however, I am really opposed to the language in the ordinance where it's now said closed street as opposed to no through traffic. The no through traffic, which was no problem, presented no problem, allowed those services to the home or family and friends to be able to visit and be able to come and go as the residents do, even if the children are walking in the street. It presented no problems because it's not a mass, it doesn't, there's not a lot of things that happen, okay, that require that. Um, I'm really concerned because when I look then at the ordinance, the other ordinance about closed streets, it requires um, for non-residents um, to demonstrate or document a need to access a resident on the street. You really have to consider this because it is a real problem for some families, and I am one of those families. This is a private thing that, I'm, that I feel now I have to make public. When you need a health care attendant to come to your home, first of all, try and get one, and try and get one in the hours that you need. I have been through this through so many agencies. And I can't control the hours to say, oh, you can't, you have to come here, you know, come between this time in the morning and you can't leave until such and such. 
that is a burden. That is an unnecessary burden to put on a family. Also, when several uh, months ago, when I was at a, uh, a meeting for the Safety Council meeting, and I said, well, what about Access Link in such, if such an ordinance was? I was told, nope, no Access Link. Now, I can tell you, you know, so there were people, they were there at the meeting, they know that was said. Well, Access Link is the, is the actual legs for one of my family members. And Access Link is critical. I can say right now that if there's not a change, the problem that, that Access Link, attendance, anyone providing health care to a member of my family, and that limits it, plus even my daughter visiting with my granddaughter and saying, oop, you gotta leave now, or you can't, or you can't come now and then, this is absurd. We do not have a safety issue with what existed in the present ordinance for Clinton Avenue. And the problems with the parts for the disabled, I don't think any of that would pass the Americans with Disabilities Amendments Act as Congress passed it, the ADA Amendments Act, because you cannot make regulations that would impede the access. It would be discriminatory for the disabled. And to limit the, those services, to limit Access Link, which I was thrown that in my face at a meeting of the, of the safety committee that comes up with these things, I just want you to please do it. I know I sound upset because this is very critical to my family. I don't just have to handle trying to get somebody to clean my house okay. and Emily, tell them you can't come. I know I'm over my time and I, I know, apologize and I don't want to be rude. That, I, I, but I, I, don't mean, I know I'm sounding upset because mm -hmm. this is serious. This is serious life issues that have not been a problem until now. So I beg you, I really beg you as members to put in there no through traffic because there was not a problem. But by putting that in, we can't have every time Anne somebody Marie, has to I'm come a police Anne stop. Marie. I'm right. sorry, okay. I'll, okay. I, I'm out. Thank you. you understand that this is very okay. serious. And I, I apologize I have to leave because I left some celebration for someone okay. to, to come here and they're waiting for me to get back. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Katzman, 35 Clinton Avenue. Could you just repeat it again? Your name Michelle is Michelle Katzman, 35 Clinton Avenue. Um, first, I would like to say I was really encouraged at the last safety meeting. Every party was heard and all the points were made to ensure safety first, which I believe was the whole goal of this endeavor. Um, let me reiterate, this has been a solution in search of a problem. No cars on Clinton Ave is still the safest plan. It was mandated 50 plus years ago. Statistics support its safety as no incidents has ever been reported. Clinton Avenue is unique. Its closed street acts as a sidewalk, thereby allowing the goal of complete street. If it is a parking issue, South Murray is open to anyone who chooses to use it. And opening Clinton during school hours will provide more. But none of the schools have enough parking right on property, as Sheila Brogan stated at the safety meetings. She also stated that the 10 to 15 minute congestion at the drop off and pickup occurs at all of the Ridgewood schools. The Ridge system functions as well as any. It truly is a 15 minute issue. I watch it every day as I walk my dog morning and night. And with the new traffic plan, it should be less of an issue. As I have an energetic dog, I'm walking Clinton Avenue and South Murray multiple times a day, all seasons, light and dark, in all weather, and I do not feel unsafe and begging for a sidewalk. I have lived on the street for 24 years, walked my children up and down the street every day for eight years at Ridge, let them walk on their own to GW and the high school, walk three dog lifespans. Almost every resident on the street has their children attend Ridge at some point without a safety concern. We are parents just like everybody else. We do not take safety lightly. Um, so here we are five years later, still contemplating about a street with no history of problems, the residents have worked with the committees to allow the street to be open during the school hours. It has taken multiple nights, sometimes three a month, away from our families and important obligations of work, children, and ailing parents. It has been voted down twice. Continual changes border on harassment of the residents, and I do feel the change unnecessary 
but I do hope with the new resolution that this will finally be put to bed and allow for it to be complete. Thank you. Anyway, you're actually allowed to speak both, but Janie, just do your name and address so you know the routine. It's amazing how much I still have to learn. Um, Jane Lemus, 118 Madison Place. And I just wanted to give, here's a, a bunch more photos that people have sent me. Just, just so you see that it wasn't like just those couple of photos that I gave you guys. Okay, left. just bring those up first. Just bring those on up. Good. And now go on back and just. Um, first of all, with what Anne Marie Agnello said, like, I, I hope nobody would disagree that, like, a health care aid is a need that no one would give her a hard time about having that person there. I, you know, had caregivers myself for 10 years while my mother lived with me with Alzheimer's, and it would have been, you know, horrific to have you know, them giving a hard time just trying to get on my street. But I don't think that's the intention. I think that the problem is that the Clinton residents, like, just like I see my fa I think my family's perfect. I don't see their flaws. And, I'm, and I think my street is wonderful. But like, maybe there are flaws that other people see that I don't. And the, you know, the resident, Chris Rudishelzer suggested sidewalks to make the street safer. A few years ago, the residents didn't want sidewalks. Then the, there was the police study done where he, where Sergeant Chuck said that it's not safe to have children running down the street when cars are there. And you know they still didn't want to accept that that's a problem. And you know not to take away anyone's you know limit access to a health care aid or an access link vehicle like. I don't think any, I hope no one would do that, but like, but to try to limit, as you see in those photos and others, like the landscapers, the commercial vehicles, or unnecessary trips, because the side, the ordinance says, the, the amendment says that no one can drive, operate a vehicle on the street unless he can document or demonstrate a need to access a residence. And I think that's like, maybe the problem is that other parents who go to Ridge who are very concerned about their children walking down Clinton see that as, you know, like a need isn't having your landscaper there or having, you know, a friend over, you, you know, a need is something that's more serious and limited. And, and now maybe if this, you know, with this new ordinance, they'll have all day to get those things done and they can say to their landscapers, look, you, can, you cannot come at 2.30 anymore. You're going to get a ticket. So that may give them like the tool that they need to be, you know, rather than saying like, well, you're not really supposed to be here between 9.30 and 3, 8, 8 and 3.45, but you know, if you have to come anyway, and then the landscapers just come whenever they feel like it. But um, you know, the, the problem with that ordinance is I don't know how exactly you enforce what a need is on a street, you know, like when do you need to be on the street and when is it just like, a convenience or you know something I mean I, I guess that's something the police are going to have to um, to figure out and anyway but I think that you know this is a, definitely a step in the right direction so thank you okay thank you Jane come on up is that the three minutes buzzer? yes good evening <laughs> Denise Lima of 319 East Glen Ave two quick things the Starbucks that's on uh, Route 17, um, which is, I think, the Ridgewood property borderline, all of the trucks are parking on the highway and running into Starbucks, which makes coming off the ramp and getting into Starbucks and maybe a simple sign, um, no parking, no standing, something. It's a nightmare waiting to happen. <clears throat> Um, the other topic is Ordinance 3605, which is about the trees, which was in today's package. Um, under the purpose, there's an indication that it's about stormwater runoff, soil erosion, decreased groundwater, recharging the aquifer, 
great intention. Um, I think that's that's great. As I move forward through the ordinance, um, what it talks about or doesn't talk about is talks about lot and block of the tree that it's located, but unfortunately our trees, because of the size and the age of them, don't perfectly fit. So I think there needs to be some description definition of when it's bordering the property lines and being very clear there um, on, on how that's going to work. The replacement of the trees, um, again, we're talking about old trees. Um, it doesn't say that the replacement, if your original intent is about erosion, if they can't replace it on site. So I'm not sure how that fits to your original intention of trying to increase you know, the, the drainage of the trees that are there. So to take a tree, put it in the money and put it in an escrow and plant a tree somewhere else is not gonna help the property that you just took that off of. So some consideration there. And also you mentioned the replacement of the height, uh, the dimension of the tree at 1.75 inches. But again, if we're thinking about the character, the shade, the, the drainage and the amount of roots and the old trees that we have, there needs to be something in here also about the height of the replacement. You cannot take the canopy of a 100 foot tree and put in a six foot little sprucey guy at 1.7. So I think you need to add something or I would recommend, we'd like to see something in here about the height as a standard as well. Otherwise, we're all not gonna be here to see the 100 foot tree grow. Um, that's it Appreciate for consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. With that, we'll close public comment. And moving on to the manager's report. Okay, um, school is out, we're in the heat of the summer, and we're all looking for things to do with our families. Here are a few things happening in Ridgewood and in Bergen County over the next few weeks. This Friday, July 14th, the Disney motion, motion picture Moana will be shown on the beach at Graydon Pool, with admission beginning at 7 p.m. and a movie beginning at sundown. This is open to all Ridgewood residents, and the cost is $5 per person. Any Ridgewood day campers may get in for free as long as they wear their Ridgewood day camp shirt. Bergen County is also sponsoring several movies in different county parks, which include Vansaw Park in Paramus, Darlington Lake in Mawa, and Riverside Park in North Arlington. We will put this information onto the village website. These movies are free and begin at approximately 8.30 p.m. The next two movies are Pete's Dragon on July 14th at Vansaw Park, and Jaws on July 19th at Darlington Lake. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> uh, Green Pool registration is still open. It's a wonderful place to spend the day with your family. There's a beach area, a kiddie pool area, areas of shade, a ramp to get into the deeper water for those with mobility challenges, a volleyball net, a playground area, and the Water's Edge Cafe, which serves up snacks and drinks. The Cashwell Memorial Shell has entertainment every Tuesday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m., and that's free to the public. This Thursday is Bucky Pizzarelli and Friends, and next Tuesday is the McVeigh Family, which are various Broadway songs sung by a family of true Broadway performers. The Ridgewood Guild sponsors art in the park and music in the night on Friday evenings in the Central Business District through September 1st. You can walk through our Central Business District and enjoy the flowers and plantings provided by the Conservancy for Public Lands. They are in bloom and look wonderful due to the hard work of this committee. Enjoy a breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert in the Central Business District after shopping at our local merchants. Speaking about shopping or dining in Ridgewood's lovely Central Business District, uh, the estate card will be available to Ridgewood taxpayers in late August. This card is a debit card, and by shopping and dining locally, various local merchants and restaurants will give rewards points. The rewards points will accumulate, and once per year, the rewards points will be used to reduce the taxpayer's property tax bill. A letter from Mayor Newton will be in the actual tax bills being mailed out in late August, which will give information about the estate card. Paving in the village continues with two contractors working. Uh, Morningside Road has been completed and the drainage work on Bogart is being done. And after that drainage work is completed, then it will be resurfaced. Paving will continue into the fall. Ridgewood Water is doing work daily on Lindwood Avenue, reconnecting pipe crossings on the brook. 
This is one of four locations that this type of work will be done over the next few months. I want to thank Age Friendly Ridgewood, who's offered um, to fund the purchase of grade and pool badges and the additional um, day for the bus come fall. Um, and I believe the applications are available at the stable for uh, the grade and pool badges. Um, also, as a reminder, I just want to remind everyone about e-notices. It's been a great tool to help with communication to residents. Um, it updates you on dangerous weather, traffic issues or adjustments to sanitation and recycling pickup schedules. Messages are sent by email and text to electronic devices. Sign up, go to the village website, go to the box on the right. It says um, Swift Reach Sign Up. And if you sign up for that, you'll be notified not only about village um, events or concerns that you should be aware of, but also Ridgewood Water. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Council reports, Councilman Hoyt. Uh, nothing to report, thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, last night, the Shade Tree Commission met and um, a couple exciting things came out of that. First of all, uh, we got introduced to the um, new park supervisor, Daniel Cramblett, and he uh, seems very excited and energetic and happy to be here. So we welcomed him and he should be a great asset to, um, to the village. And um, discussed was, as some of you may know, there is a um, capital tree replacement program to um, plant $55,000 worth of trees. So at last night's meeting, a uh, decision was made to, um, if you look at Ridgewood in the recycling map, we have areas A, B, C, and D. And two years ago, we started, um, started going according to the, the recycling map by section. So we planted about eight and a half thousand dollars worth of trees in, in section A and eight or nine in B last year, or this spring actually, because of the drought, our fall planting got moved up to the spring. So this year uh, with the capital program, we've decided to plant $20,000 worth of trees in section C and $20,000 worth of trees in section D. Um, then with the uh, regular line item budget, we'll start again in section A and B and everything should just about even out. Uh, with the additional $15,000 that's left, we've decided to um, really look at the tree wells in the central business district and plant trees in them, but also come up with a plan when we do it to get rid of the lip around there because it acts as a water barrier and potentially a tripping hazard. And um, there's also a subcommittee of the Shade Tree Commission that's specifically looking at ideas and designs and soil amendments for the tree wells downtown. So we could replace trees and they have a better chance of survival instead of keep spending money and replacing trees every several years because there's just not really ideal conditions downtown and we're hoping to improve that. So that's pretty much everything that came out of that meeting and I didn't have anything else to report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Walsh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have Richard Arts Council. We met last night and um, had our reorganization meeting. Uh, Audrey Fink was um, uh, is going to continue on as the chairperson, and then we have uh, co-vice chairs Rosie McCooey and Dana Glazer. Um, we're going to have our next artist talk on July 9th at the library. It's a 3D um, graphic artist. Her name is Ashley Zylinski. So we're um, just reminding everybody because it is summer to um, to come and uh, and take part. It starts at 11 o'clock, um, and we're going to have a talk. And then she's going to show everybody how the 3D uh, printing works, and that's her that's her specialty. Um, we're suggesting that middle school age and above and adults. Um, just because of the complexity of some of the things. Um, we have our, after that, on August 17th, we're going to have our next artist series, Art of the Editorial Illustration. We're having Drew Martin and Michael Thompson. And uh, so everybody can just put that on their calendar because I know with the summer, it's, uh, everybody's looking for something to do and it's, it's a nice way to, uh, to stay within the village and, and do something fun. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's that's all I've got. Okay, great. Councilman Hache? Nothing to report. Okay. And I only have um, tomorrow night, Historic Preservation Commission will be meeting 8 p.m. in the garden room and Tuesday, according to my calendar, uh, planning board meeting and on deck, according to my calendar, and this may have changed, I have the enclave application. Um, I ask everyone just to check the website agenda to uh, confirm that. With that, we're moving on. Okay. 
I move the first reading of Ordinance 3606. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voight? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Hinton? Yes. So ordered, will the clerk please read Ordinance 3606 by title? An ordinance appropriating $1,600,000 from the Water Utility Capital Fund for the acquisition of property in and by the Village of Ridgewood in the County of Bergen, New Jersey. I move that Ordinance 3606 be adopted on first reading that August 9, 2017 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? No. Walsh? No. And Newton? Yes. The following uh, resolutions for, re uh, there's no public hearing of ordinances. The following resolution is numbered 17-197 through 17-200 will be adopted by a consent agenda with one vote by the Village Council. They will be read by title only. Award contract, Lafayette Reservoir Improvements. Award contract, polyphosphate pumps for corrosion control. Award professional services contract, Cedar Hill Reservoir Improvements. Authorized lease of property for co-location of wireless telecommunications antennas. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Uh, resolution number 17-201 will be considered separately and read in full. 2017 water capital budget. Whereas the Village of Ridgewood deems it necessary and desirable to provide for a water capital budget not previously reflected in the 2017 water capital budget of said municipality. And whereas NJAC 5-30-4.4B provides that the water capital budget of a governing body shall be amended to reflect any provisions, change, or inconsistencies with said cap water capital budget. Now therefore be it resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood in the County of Bergen that the 2017 water capital budget shall be amended to reflect the addition of Ordinance Number 3606, Acquisition of Property Not Previously Provided in the 2017 Water Capital Budget, and be it further resolved that the project listed below as promulgated by the Local Finance Board shall present the amendment to Water Capital Budget for the calendar year 2017. Method of financing project is acquisition of property. Appropriation is $1,600,000. Water capital fund, $1,600,000. Bonds and notes, zero. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Oops, hold on one sec. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? No. Walsh? No. And Newton? Yes. Okay. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3607. Second. One second. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered. Will the clerk please read Ordinance 3607 by yeah, title? Yeah, I will in a sec. I am, for some reason, missing those pages. So if someone could share them with me, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I apologize. That's the uh, blue collar. Blue collar. Yeah. Thank you. I apologize. Um, An ordinance to fix salaries, wages, and other compensation of and for blue collar employees of the Village of Ridgewood, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey. I move, uh, I move that ordinance 3607 be adopted on first reading and then August 9, 2017 be fixed as a date for the hearing thereon. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3608. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered. Will clerk please read Ordinance 3608 by title? An ordinance to fix salaries, wages, and other compensation of and for white collar employees of the Village of Ridgewood, County of Bergen, and State of New Jersey. I move that Ordinance 3608 be adopted on first reading and that August 9, 2017 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3609. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So what is the clerk please read Ordinance 3609 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 145 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Fees at Section 145-6, Enumeration of Fees Relating to Code Chapters. 
I moved on in 3609, be adopted on first reading in that August 9, I think, 2017. I think there was going to be an amendment to this. Mm -hmm. No, to the 125. Right. Yes. So we have to uh, make a motion. To amend it before you vote. Yeah. I, I make a, a motion to amend ordinance 303609 to reflect the cost of the replacement tree to be $125. Okay, so then I need a second for that. Second. Okay, and so this is um, to approve that amendment. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. White? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay, then we can go on to adopting it on first reading as amended. I moved on in 3609, be adopted on first reading as amended, and in August 9, 2017, be fixed as a date for the hearing thereon. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. White? No. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of ordinance 3610. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. White? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered, will clerk please read ordinance 3610 by title. An ordinance to amend chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Vehicles and Traffic at section 265-66, no stopping or standing. I move that ordinance 3610 be adopted on first reading and that August 9th, 2017 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of ordinance 3611. Second. Okay. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered, will clerk please read ordinance 3611 by title? An ordinance to authorize the provisions of NJSA 39 5A 1 to be applicable to all, to all of the premises and property owned and operated by the Ridgewood Public Schools, subject to the approval of the Commissioner of Transportation of the State of New Jersey. I move that ordinance 3611 be adopted on first reading and on August 9, 2017, be fixed as a date for the hearing thereof. Uh, second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of ordinance 3612. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So ordered, will the clerk please read ordinance 3612 by title? An ordinance to prevent the unlawful enrollment of school children in the Ridgewood Public School System and to provide penalties therefore. I move that ordinance 3612 be adopted on first reading that August 9th, 2017 be fixed as a date for the hearing thereon. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read ordinance 3601 by title on second reading and that the public hearing thereon be open. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of ordinance 3601? An ordinance to amend chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Vehicles and Traffic at six Section 265-59, Schedule 9, Stop Intersections. Okay. The public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move that Ordinance 3601 be adopted on second reading and final publication as required by law. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Lloyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read ordinance 3602 by title on the second reading at the public hearing thereon be open. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of ordinance 3602? An ordinance to amend chapter 222 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Power Tools, Landscaping, and Yard Maintenance Equipment at section 222-1, commercial use. Public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move that ordinance 3602 be adopted on second reading and final publication as required by law. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read ordinance 3603 by title on second reading and that the public hearing thereon be open. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? 
Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of Ordinance 3603? An ordinance authorizing a special emergency appropriation pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-53 for the preparation and execution of a master plan revision in the village of Ridgewood. Okay. Public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing be closed. And a second. A second, I'm sorry. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the ordinance 3603 be adopted on second reading and final publication as required by law. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Newton? Yes. I move the clerk read ordinance 3604 by title on second reading at the public hearing the run be open. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Newton? Yes, will the clerk please read the title of Ordinance 3604? An ordinance to amend Chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Vehicles and Traffic and Section 265-64, Schedule 14, Streets Closed to Traffic. Public hearing is now open. Okay. I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the ordinance 3604 be adopted on second reading and final publications required by law. Second. Ashe? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? No. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay. Um, on the next one, five, right. So do I make a mo can I? We're gonna, um, we're gonna read it by title. We have to hold the hearing. Okay, fine, and then we just carry it. Okay, fine. I move the clerk read ordinance 3605 by title on second reading of the public hearing thereon be open. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Will the clerk please read the title of ordinance 3605? An ordinance to amend chapter 260 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood, Trees and Shrubs. So the public hearing is now open. Yeah, come on up, Denise. Mm -hmm. Is it, is, it a, is it an opportunity to debate what's in here now again, or you can speak to Anybody it? You comment. You can whatever. Yeah. How question. long do I get here? I'm I just, sorry. I, I think we have to. Do you need to state your name and address? Yeah, sure. It's Denise Lima again, 319 East Glen Ave. I just want to be sure that the purpose and the objective of this ordinance is to make sure we're pres preserving the trees that are here and not letting a builder come in and spending $225, which is peanuts when they're trying to build McMansions in the middle of Ridgewood. That's, that's nothing to them. That's like finding an athlete $5,000. It, it just doesn't matter for them. So I'm not sure if we're trying to preserve the soil, the character, the trees, um, shade for community. I'm not really sure what this is actually doing. If you're still allowing people to cut them down and, and replacing them with a small shrub. Well, I, I also I, don't. I, I, could, I could speak to that if you have more. So the idea is to um, in, in help to maintain soil erosion and also to preserve the tree canopy. Now, in some instances, you're doing an addition and there might be a tree or two in the way of the addition and those trees would come down as it stands right now. So the idea was to not make it so onerous on the resident so that they could replace them either on their property or if they didn't have the room to put them on their property then they could pay into the escrow account. Because we lose over 200 trees a year just from the sidewalk replacement program, there's also been big storms that take down more than 200 trees. So there's, there's missing trees all over the village. So any way that we could help to, to replant trees and replenish them, then it helps maybe not on that specific property if they can't be put back there, but it will help somewhere else in the village to provide shade and make the street more pleasant. And they also reduce heating and cooling costs and so on and so forth. There's a lot of facts out there that, that show benefits for trees. They benefit your, um, your home values. They, they're, they're really, they're, they're an asset and they need to be addressed at some point because the Shade Tree Commission went defunct, I guess, in Ridgewood 
in the mid 90s and you know other than maybe taking trees down there hasn't been much work to actually preserve and maintain them and that's what we've been really working hard at the shade tree commission to do I know for that. the past I've three years the replacement, the replacement size of the tree unfortunately when, when you take down an 80 foot oak you can't put in a, a 50 or 60 foot oak back in that place it's just that the tree is too huge so the standard size is between 1.75 and two inches of the, the diameter of the trees that we get. And, um, but any, that's not addressing height at all, right? You can, you can put in a rose bush that might fit that. I well, mean, no, there's, you, you, there's no height in this ordinance at all, right? There's, there's a list. There's I, no height, though, in this ordinance. There is no height in the okay. ordinance. The industry standard is to measure the, the tree's diameter at four and a half feet from the, from the ground. That's, that's just how trees are, are measured. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, up to you for the decision of that. Um, and what you described is essential use or need to cut down a tree. So you're talking about an addition. Any kind of work that you're doing at your ho uh, home, in addition, something like, something like that. And there's also a lot of exemptions in here, too. So you would be exempt if, say, the tree is dead or it's dying, or especially if it's infested with, um, like, emerald ash borer or Asian longhorn beetle or something like that. It's been an invasive species that's going to spread to other trees, so you would want to get them out there. So you wouldn't have to replace that. There's no charges or anything. So you figure most of the trees that get taken down are either dead or dying or diseased, and there's, there's a valid reason for taking them down. This is, this is strictly just focusing on perfectly fine, healthy trees, and it'll mostly be enacted, I'm, I'm sure, during site plan reviews and applications through the zoning board to do additions and property improvements. I think a lot of us feel that that description and passion about dead, damaged, security, safety of others is well written in here. And nobody could dispute that. Um, I, we just don't feel like the wording around essential of taking it down, um, especially with all of the larger homes that are getting disposed of, knocked down, and bigger McMansions coming in, being really clear about making it essential. I heard about your height. I get that. I also think a lot of the trees are bordering a lot of the neighbors. And, it, and again, the wording in here is not strong enough, we feel, to really cover when it's on the border of neighbors' homes, when it's impacting 22 other people that benefit from that tree. Does that person who owns the lot and block solely get to decide that? I mean, there's, the, a tree is just so big that it, it can't possibly be that one owner's decision. There needs to be more of a committee, especially when it's bordering and hanging over somebody's home that they've been used to for 10 years. Courts have already, courts have already opined that you, know, the, you can deal with branches that stick over your property, but you don't have the right to take it down or That's have right. a say in it's taking it down. That's right. So you can't write, we can't write into the ordinance that now becomes a group decision. It's the property owner. Okay, and what happens when it borders the tree trunk and um, these older trees that we have are, are on and bordering uh, neighbors? They split, sometimes they do split the property lines, but those are exceptional situations. It, that, that exception is not really clear in here, that's all. That, that's all. I, I, think, I think it just needs to be clarified for that. And, and the, the, the fee seems small. So when you're a builder and you don't really care and you're trying to build a million dollar house, they don't care. 20 times 225 is nothing. I, I just feel like that needs to be a, a larger amount. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Boyd Loving, 342 South Irving Street. I will repeat the same comments I made uh, during the public hearing of 3599. Uh, my concern is about the permitting process, particularly about there is no requirement that I see in the ordinance, the proposed ordinance, to require that people post a permit when they've got a permit. Uh, as I stated with 3599, there, there is restrictions about water usage and there are exemptions to the water usage restrictions. But as we drive around, we see people who are watering their lawns, and they obviously, uh, new houses with new lawns, they you know, probably have exemptions, but there's no permit that's posted to indicate that they have called 
to get that authorization. So I, I'm just concerned that you're going to be driving by somebody's house, you're going to see that a tree is coming down, and you're going to wonder, gee, do they have a permit to do this or not? Has this been reviewed or not? It would be nice if there was a requirement that once the permit is issued, that the permit be prominently posted so that residents, police, whoever is involved in the enforcement of this can easily tell that this is somebody who is called and may gotten the necessary authorization as opposed to somebody who is trying to skirt the law. So I would just request that there be some language put in this that requires that the permit be posted and prominently displayed. Thank you. Thank you, Board. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we can carry and close it. And then carry. Okay. So I move the public hearing be closed. Second. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the ordinance 3605 be adopted on second reading and final publications with Reverend. I think there's going to be a moment that, that was. It's going to be what? Um, I just made the second. I, I just seconded it. No, Mike, if you want to, if you want to carry it, somebody if you just carry, makes a motion. You have to make a motion oh, okay. to carry it, and it's to I make, a, I make a motion to carry ordinance 3605 to the August 9th public meeting. Second. Just one sec. Okay. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Roy? Yes. Walsh? It, I, I don't understand. Why is it being carried? Is there a reason? Well, we're going to like, take a look at some of the uh, some of the additional language and um, okay. some of the things and clean it up a little bit. Okay. Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to carry it to August 9th. So the following resolutions, number 17-202 through 70-222, with the exception of resolution 17-215, will be adopted by a consent agenda with one vote by the village council. Uh, they will be considered with one vote and they will be read by title only. Title 59 approval, police handguns and magazines. Award contract, police handguns and magazines. Award contract under state contract, ammunition for police handguns. Award contract under state contract, holsters and magazine pouches for handguns. Award contract under state contract, tires. Award contract under state contract, lifts and support stands, fleet services. Award contract under National Joint Powers Alliance, front and loaders with snow plows. Award contract under National Joint Powers Alliance, two sanita sanitation, chassis and cabs. Award professional services contract, financial feasibility study for 240 car parking garage at the Hudson Street parking lot. Title 59 approval, paint curbs yellow. Authorize additional funding for special attorney for RCRD lawsuit. Approve major soil permit, 240 Associates, Chestnut Village. Declare fire department property surplus. Endorse Bergen County Historic Preservation Trust Fund grant application, the James Rose Center. Appoint clean communities coordinator. Appoint interim recycling program coordinator. Authorize release of escrow, Capital One Bank, 10 Godwin Avenue. Accept donation from Ridgewood Board of Education for stigma-free initiative. Award contract under National Joint Powers Alliance to rear loader packers. Award professional services contract boundary and topographic survey of train station parking lot. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Voigt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay. Resolution 17 215 will be read in full. Whereas the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood has determined that they wish to develop the Shedler property of the Village of Ridgewood designated as Block 4704, Lots 9, 10, 11, and 12, with a street address of 460 West Saddle River Road on the Village Tax Map into a public park. And whereas the village council members have agreed to form an ad hoc committee for this purpose, comprised of two village council members, the director and assistant director of parks and recreation, a member of the engineering staff, and resident members of the planning board, Ridgewood Wildscape, Shade Tree Commission, Green Team, and Parks Recreation Conservation Board, and a sports organization, as well as a Ridgewood resident who lives in the area of the proposed park. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood does hereby, hereby appoint the following members to the Shedler Park Development Ad Hoc Committee 
effective immediately. Councilman Ramon Hache, Deputy Mayor Michael Seaton, Timothy Cronin, Director of Parks and Recreation, Nancy Bigos, Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation, Jovan Mahenzik, Assistant Engineer, Isabella Altano, Planning Board Member, Eleanor Gruber, Richard Wildscape Member, Manish Shramali, Member Shade Tree Commission and Green Team, Nicholas Whitney, Resident in Area of Shedler Property, Philip Dolce, Resident in Area of Shedler Property, Matthew Cunningham, Sports Representative, Michael Winograd, Member of Parks, Recreation, Conservation Board, and Ridgewood Maroons. May I have a motion? A move. And a second? Do you have a discussion after the second. Oh, okay, 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 got it. Second. Okay, discussion? Yeah, I, I am I'm not against having the ad, ad hoc committee at all, and, and some of the people that are, actually all the people on this are very qualified. Um, my concern is that I, I, this is the first I've seen of it. Uh, I, I didn't even know that these people were going to be appointed. Um, and I'm just curious as to how that happened uh, and, you know, who was, and, uh, who was uh, asked about this because I'm, I'm in the dark. So. It was, um, it was discussed in closed session, no? It was discussed several times in public and it was discussed in closed session and there were a variety of emails that were, uh, came in from residents. I think Councilman Hache recommended um, Two people. Michael Winograd and Matthew Cunningham. Matt Cunningham. Other residents uh, made inquiries and the village manager uh, also assisted with some of her background and uh, offered the names of the um, Parks and Rec and uh, Engineering. And that's how it was established. So um, I, I think there's maybe one or two people might be missing from this are actually committees. One of them is open space um, and there likely should be a representative from open space on this uh, since they were probably um, integral in, in uh, identifying the, the uh, property and buying the property. So I'm just curious as to why they weren't added to this. Someone like Ralph Curry uh, might, be, might be a good person to add. I just think that Mr. Curry probably did an email or, and like it, I think it was discussed and closed and I don't, there were no names offered from, or off, I guess open space wasn't offered. To my recollection, I may be wrong, but. Would it be possible to add someone like a Ralph Curry to this or someone even from open space so that they had a say? So I, I think that um, the one concern has been to not have too big a committee. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, um, I mean, it would be my recommendation to do the resolution now as it is and then figure out if there's anyone else and submit those names and then move forward from there because we can always add. Yeah, that makes sense. It's up to the council. I mean, if you want to amend this current resolution, we could do it right now. If you want to, you know, I don't know whether or not you know if Mr. Curry wants to serve or not. And, and certainly, I don't know if the council is all in favor of that either. But, um, or we could adopt this now and then we could um, do, uh, you know, add another member or two or whatever next month. Yeah, sure. so I so think what, every, whatever every, you prefer. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, which is fine because every person, I think it's really important that every person who is on the list actually expressed an interest. And um, that's really, as a matter of fact, the number of residents that expressed interest uh, had to be significantly narrowed in order not to have such a big committee um, to, as to create, a, for lack of a better expression, a headless octopus. But. Um, so if we want to move forward and then we can always revisit it at a later time. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, we could put, okay. or we could put in, you know, a member of the open space committee to be, to, to be determined. So, you know, it's in there and then whoever wants to. Well, whatever the council on. wants, it can do. I, I mean, I'd like to just move forward with okay. it as is and then add, so this way we know exactly who it is. And then we're looking at another person. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, open space makes sense. Um, my only concern would be because we haven't, you know, had any expression of, of interest from Mr. Curry, that we just leave it open-ended for somebody from open space. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I said, it's not an open space member. Yeah, that works. To be determined. Yeah, that works. All righty. So we're just going to adopt this as is now. 
Yes. And then uh, next month right. we can add the open space committee okay. person. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Right. So um, we had a motion and a second. So now we are going to have a roll call vote. Hache? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Foyt? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Okay. That was our resolution. Okay, good. Okay. And with that, we're back to public comment. This time not to exceed five minutes. Hi, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, Rorick Halliday, 374 Evergreen Place. Uh, I have a gift for the mayor, a book called The Death of Common Sense. I should probably present it to the council. The reason I bought this, I'd like to present it to you all, is one ordinance after another just tax my logic. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. So one ordinance after another that gets passed seems to tax my logic. For instance, the, the tree ordinance. Everybody loves trees. People treat their property different ways. And in my case, for instance, we had 13 oaks when we moved here 50 years ago. Now we're down to two, and they're truly on their last legs. Now it's gonna be up to me and my wife to decide when we're gonna cut them without having to come to the village to ask for a permit. Now, my wife, who is a green thumb, and you all know what she's done, has been replanting her trees using uh, dogwoods. Now, dogwoods are not as majestic as oaks, but still they serve a great purpose. Now, instead of working with the community, through the schools, through Health Barn, to encourage people to plant, to teach people how to take care of trees, and most importantly, the people who fail us most are you, all of you, with the ter terrible, terrible state of the trees that we have in Ridgewood. What are you doing to maintain them? For instance, <clears throat> when uh, the Conservancy helped uh, the lighting, phase one of the lighting of Van Nest. Basically, a huge amount of money went into trimming those trees that hadn't been trimmed in years. That's terrible. You look at the parking lot at the garage, the park, the green park, which I hope will not get cut back. You have two majestic trees that haven't been trimmed in years. Who's gonna do that? This is what I would concentrate on. I would work with Health Barn, these kids, they're great as far as learning how to plant and get their hands dirty. Get them to work with their parents to plant trees. But this idea that now we have to have a permit with a yellow sign saying, yes, I can cut the tree. I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. Now, you look at some other ordinances that you have passed. And for instance, I was listening to a lady, and the reason I came was a really heart-rendering story she has about being able to park because you you've limited the parking during school hours. Uh, I remember I went to Bogart and drove around Bogart. And I said, what the heck is going on? One party who's a friend of the mayor complains and so you limit parking. And so it means if we live there, my wife could not have a book group in the afternoon where, where, where all the people could park. Now, to me, a child who is old enough to walk to school should be old enough to navigate parked cars. And frankly, the danger to me is not with a place like Bogart, where the traffic is so light. I mean, there's nothing. That it's more all those horrible, self-absorbed, rigid drivers driving these big SUVs, texting and everything else. These are the people that I would worry about. I, I walk a lot around the village. And I tell you, every time I walk, I take my life into my own hands. In fact, once I really had a serious accident trying to avoid an unrushing car. Now, frankly, and I keep on hearing about the Citizen Safety Committee, they keep on meeting. I don't see what they've done. We need intelligent lights. We need more stop signs. We need four-way stop signs. We need things to basically limit and, and slow down people. This is the kind of a thing we need to have you do, rather than just pass one ordinance after another, like the Airbnb one. What good does it do? I mean, how many people are renting their homes? I mean, it's silly. Another one which, uh, thankfully, 
we nipped at the bud is what I call the chipmunk ordinance, where someone complained about chipmunks, and therefore you're going to be limiting how birds were going to be fed. This is silly. It's just insane. So you don't have to prove yourselves by showing how powerful you are by passing one ordinance after another. Concentrate on doing the right things and not just passing more and more ordinances with put more and more work, more and more you know, weight on the village and the people who, uh, uh, who work there. I mean, who's going to enforce these ordinances? Who's going to do that? Are you going to be adding more people just to enforce one silly ordinance after another? It is silly. So you don't have to prove how tough you are by passing another ordinance. Thank, Thank you. you. And now this is the book. Now, is it legal for me to present the mayor with a book? It's, it costs can, $10. You can drop it off, yes. OK. So just get to return it. <laughs> it's not a library it's book, a library. is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Jamie, do you mind? I just I, I need to address a comment that was just made. Sure. And, uh, maybe Mr. Hallaby won't leave just yet because I'm going to address something. So if you don't mind, just one moment. Mr. Hallaby, I take great exception with the suggestion that an ordinance was put in place for the safety of children in parking on Bogart because, as you allege, it was done for a friend of mine. Simply not true. These kinds of manipulations of facts really need to stop. Not only that, even your fantasy chipmunk ordinance, which was not something that came from this village council. I'm not asking you to come up. I'm just making a comment. I'm not asking you to come up. I'm making a comment now. That ordinance was coming from the health department. It really must end these attacks on people. An individual went through a process at the Citizen Safety Advisory Committee for years. So thank you. Come on, Jean. That was actually, that was like one of the things I was going to say. I was going to answer them for you. Um, just, just children under five. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane Ray, Miss 118 <laughs> Medicine Place. Um, just to confirmed that like children under 10 are not safe walking in any kind of traffic by themselves. They don't have the cognitive skills. And it just goes to prove the point that I often make that like safety is not a common sense kind of thing. People ask for stop signs where they would actually make traffic and safety worse. So anyway, but thank you for passing this, the ordinance tonight about Clinton. Um, and I hope that, you know, it can be used somehow as a tool, as I said, to get all the cars off of the road, because by you, you, you see on that photo, be, ideally you'd you know, have no cars parked during 2.30 to 3.30 at 8 to 9 also. I think when people are like thinking about illegally cutting through Clinton, they see parked cars and moving cars and they think, oh, everybody else is doing it, I'll do it too. It doesn't make it right, but that's, um, that's what I'd really like to see is also no parking, and also I don't know how you're going to figure out how what is a necessary visitor. But you know that seems like I don't know if you need to refine that. But anyway, thank you, and hopefully you know we'll, it will be safer on Clinton one way or the other. Okay. Thank Thanks you, a lot. Uh, good evening again, Boyd Loving, 342 South Irving Street. I'm wondering if you could clarify uh, the resolution you passed tonight, 17-211. When uh, Councilwoman Walsh discussed yellow paint, it was my belief that this was going to be something that occurred throughout the village. Now I see it's restricted to three or four corners. And I'm just wondering, is this going to be that it has to be done by resolution for each area? Or is the yellow paint going to be appearing only in that area? So uh, I think you're right. We meant it for the whole village. And, and I didn't realize this that they had only put here. the three streets on. So I actually did see the three streets. I, I, I read it, and I thought the same thing. Yeah. But I thought this was a good starting point, actually. And this would at least give us a flavor for what the response was and how it worked when it was implemented. So I don't think it's a bad idea. And I do anticipate that we'll go village wide with it. But I, I was a little surprised by that as yeah, well earlier. I, no, I said so are you going to then have to do resolutions for each area that are going to be painted? Probably, most likely after this original 
three streets, we'll probably then just do one uh, resolution for the entire village. Oh, okay. It's kind of, th th these have been areas of concern recently, as you know, and so we thought we'd start here. Um, um, there are times when, in the past, where we've painted curbs yellow, and um, some residents became very um, upset because it was in front of their property. And so we're going to see how this goes. Hopefully it all goes well. I think it will. It, it is the law, obviously. And so um, I, I think it will go well. And then we'll probably have another resolution for the rest of the village. OK, thank you. Uh, an another comment I want to make, and I, I've spoken to the mayor about this individually, is that the walkway that leads from the Tenhove Plaza up to the sidewalk on Maple Avenue is not lit at all uh, in the evening. Um, I've got no concerns about crime in the area, particularly because the police department is right nearby, but I do have concerns about people tripping and falling and uh, winding up suing the village because the area wasn't lit. And I'm just wondering what plans there are to add lighting to that area so that we can be safe when we walk from Ten Hole Plaza up to the street. That's it. So I can answer that. Um, part of it was the trees, um, the 12 trees going up were needed pruning. We have had those trees pruned and we have had a uh, request into PSCNG to put a light on their existing pole to come, that will come down that pathway. So, um, you know, unfortunately we'll push them again, but we're kind of at their mercy as to when they'll do it. But uh, we'll reach out to them again to see how quickly we can get that done. Because you're not the only one who uses that as a parking area for either meetings or some of the events on Veterans Field at in night. So that's what we'll do. I was hoping there was some consideration going to be given to like some sort of ground lighting. A lot of money truck. to do that um, is what, you know, we were told estimates are quite expensive. So we're going to try with this first because there's not a lot of, um, of ground there. You know, there's a lot of right. concrete going up. Right. So. Let's see, let's see how this um, you know, spotlight lamp from that other pole looks like, and hopefully it'll light it up enough. If not, we'll look at other options. Okay, well, hopefully we have better luck with PSCNG on this than we have had on other issues in the village. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Okay. We'll close public comment. And we'll take a resolution to go into closed session. Be resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood that the Village Council meet in closed session on July 12, 2017 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter on the agenda can be reached. And the said closed session be held in the caucus room on the fourth floor of the Ridgewood Village Hall, 131 North Maple Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey. Be it further resolved that the matters to be discussed in closed session are limited to legal matters to include Coa Valley Hospital, Barrington Road, and contract negotiations to include RIC development. This matter is allowable under NJSA 10 colon 4 12 at second. Be it further resolved that the minutes of this meeting shall be made available to the general public when such matters have been deemed completed by resolution of the Village Council. May I have a motion? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you.